today. And we are, this is, so I'll do a welcome, that's probably the best place to start, isn't it, with a welcome to our um, WLA Coaches on 2021 and our session on leadership coaching and um, executive coaching. I am absolutely thrilled to welcome three great coaches. Everybody's joining now. Oh, this is fab. Let me just move everyone here. So I'd like to welcome uh, Ben and to Mel and to Kim, who you will hear from um, shortly. And um, to say thank you again. Thank you not only for being here and giving your expertise and wisdom around why we all love coaching as much as we do, but also, of course, your um, the, the support you're giving to the Coachathon and the number of sessions. And I might put you on the spot in a minute and ask you how many sessions you're doing today. I saw a lovely little message on um, LinkedIn that if you saw the post from, um, who was it? Was it Susie? Some, was it Susie? Oh, I'm getting confused with Susie here. And she put on there, she had a picture of a load of fruit and vegetables and she's doing a smoothie because she's got eight sessions today and she's getting herself psyched up to deliver eight great sessions. So um, I thought that was fab. <laughs> I love that. Um, hi, Liz. Nice to see you here. Um, and to Nuth as well. If you can pop in um, the box where you're calling from so we can we can just see what's going on. And um, I'll make the request again. Those of you who are coaches who are joining us, let us know how your coaching sessions are going by putting in the in the chat box uh, any um, anything. Hi, Petra. Thanks for joining us. And hi, Pauline. Um, put in the chat box any feedback you're getting, any lives we're changing, how it's helping you, how it's helping others. And um, we can then hopefully we're willing to share some of this out there. We've already had I love Nadine on the first call said she'd had a session first thing this morning and the lady from Pakistan said, I wish I could give you a hug. That was great. So I thought that was fantastic. Any feedback is always brilliant. Um, so, yeah, thank you. It's lovely to see where everybody's calling in from. So welcome, welcome to our to our session. And, and as I say, to Ben and to Kim and to Mel. So our intention is to talk about coaching, why we love coaching. Um, we'll probably talk a little bit about how we got into coaching, uh, some stories and um, why these guys love the coach thumb. And we want to take questions from you. These three people are very, very experienced executive coaches, um, as am I, actually. So we are welcome. We can take any questions. And if it's right and if you want to, we may even offer up a little bit of live coaching on the call if anybody wants that. Well, that would be that would be great. <gasps> Pauline from Qatar, welcome. How fab is that? Um, I love the fact that everybody's in so many amazing places around the world. It's brilliant. So let me, first of all, we'll do it in alphabetical order. I'm going to go to Ben first and perhaps, Ben, you can do a little bit of a little bit of a potted history um, and um, why you love coaching and um, yeah, your your sort of experiences and, and, and also why you're a part of the coach thought. That'll be fab. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ben Diamond in the Lake District in Cumbria. And so I've been coaching for about 20 years. And I think the reason I so the reason I got into coaching was because I experienced coaching and I suddenly realized how impactful coaching can be. It was for me personally. So, you know, I know that uh, coaching helped me has helped me massively in my own life. And so I work with a range of leaders, um, you know, senior managers, uh, leaders in business, directors, execs. And I think the thing for me about coaching that is so amazing is that coaching is, is, is about the individual. And, you know, we could have 10 people who have the same challenge, but the reason they have that challenge is different for each of them, because what's underneath it is about them as a person and how that plays into who they are as a leader. So I think the, the reason for me that coaching is so effective is because it's not a one size fits all approach to solving something. It's about that individual and about how they can make that happen and work for themselves. So uh, what I love about the Coachathon is that it's really empowering women to actually take control of their own lives and their businesses and, and empowering them to do things for themselves, which I think completely aligns with, with what coaching is about, which is about empowering people and helping them to make a difference in their own lives. So that's the reason I want to be part of it because I think it's, it's perfectly aligned. And uh, I've done two sessions so far this morning. I've got another four later on. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Awesome. 
lovely to um to have you and uh, kim's next in the alphabet first names ops oh right okay <laughs> um, i'm so used to it with a surname beginning with v to becoming last in the list so, thank you for that sandra so yeah, like, like Ben, I got into coaching um, because of the power of coaching for me um, when I first had it. I've, I've spent many years working with leaders in different organisations, most, most recently in pharmaceuticals, to be better communicators and engage their staff and to um, build a really positive culture for the company. Um, and... I kind of got subsumed into that and didn't think about myself. So it's like the plumber, you know, he, he, he does a great job for everybody else, but his own plumbing is in a parlous state. So it was a bit like that for me. And the power for, of coaching was in really having somebody listen to me about what I was doing and to play back to me um, what I was saying and to reveal those self-limiting behaviors that I was trapped in um, I don't have time um, I'm not good at that um, you know all those things that we tell ourselves we get a little loop tape going in our heads and it was really powerful to have somebody play those back to me for me to hear them back from somebody else's point of view and I thought this is so good um, I want to do this <laughs> so um, so, yeah, it was a natural transition for me after many years working in the corporate environment to um, take a leap of faith and retrain as a, an executive coach. And I've been doing that now for three years. So many years of coaching within the corporate environment and now operating um, outside that as an independent so and, um, I'm hoping I, to share that with others and, and help them to recognise their own stumbling blocks. And, and why the coach of thumb, Kim? What, what's got you well, involved? Um, it's always good to give back, isn't it? Um, you know, for every client we have who pays top dollar, it's good to um, enable others who haven't had coaching before. It's a great cause empowering uh, women in sub-Saharan Africa to take a control of their own lives because um, that's so hard to do even in in the privileged um, west you know is it's hard to to make that work so it's particularly good to, to empower those women to take control of their own lives and make take their kids out of poverty and give their kids the chance to carry on Awesome, thank you. And Mel, over oh, follow to you. that, hey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good morning, everybody. I'm Mel. Um, I came to coaching sort of through the back door, really. Um, I had an HR career and I worked in big corporates and then I went and did um, interim work. And one of my assignments was to be at a business school. And they offered me a coaching certificate as a gift. And I'm like, I'm not sure I want to be a coach. Anyway, it was the, the CEO of the organization who worked for who said to me, but you already do this stuff. You have a coaching leadership style that made me go, OK, I'll go and learn something new because I'm always up for learning new things. And for me, it was the glue that brought everything together, all of my different leadership experience and the thing that stood out for me was how lonely leadership is. And I found in HR that people would come to me because I was the safe space and they would talk, but they showed up as whole people. And the fascinating thing with leadership is it, it allows you to bring the whole of you into the space and explore it and be authentic. Because so often we get in our own way in leadership. And we, we don't realize that some of the protective strategies we put in when we're too busy or we're anxious actually block our positivity and our ability to be resourceful. And I think the great thing about coaching is with the right coach and that safe space, you can join all the dots and actually start to get some real breakthroughs. Um, being able to be in a confidential space and talk without worrying about 
I won't get my promotion, I won't get my pay increase because there's another agenda in the room. So um, that's why I became a coach, um, was to help leaders improve their self-awareness. Um, Coachathon to me is another one of these things that joins all the dots. It's been talked about, but this empowering of others, I think, is really important. And when we look at the little microcosm that we work with, with Microloan, the difference that this can make is phenomenal. And it just shows that little things go a long way. And sometimes we shouldn't ignore the little things. And I think the fact that we can expose people to having an experience of coaching that they can afford is also good because a lot of people get put off by, I can't ring so-and-so because it's going to be too expensive. So I think this is a great opportunity to experience it, have a real taster and see whether it's something for you. And it's certainly something I had along my career that was really beneficial. So thank you, Sandra. Oh, fabulous. Now, I'm interested. Most people have got their cameras off. But how many of you who are not multitasking right now? <laughs> um, how many of you are either coaches because I don't know we've got so many coaches I haven't got to know everybody yet are either coaches in the coach thon um, or just coaches not in coach thon and how many of you have got a coach so I don't know whether anybody wants just to share that I'm curious about who who we've got in our room today is anybody willing to to share that it would be lovely if you did or maybe not. Maybe they're, they're uh, both, says Petra. Thank you, Petra. You have both. So you're, you are a coach and you have a coach. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's have a little look on that. I'm going to open up the chat box and let's just see. It's always really nice to see um, everybody here <gasps> and all you people from all these places around the world. So um, I'm not. So Nisi, you're not a coach and you don't have a coach yet. OK, great. Well, we can perhaps talk to you a little bit now. And Liz has just got to shoot off because she's got to coach. <laughs> So she is. Uh, that's the great thing about today. It is a kind of hop in, hop out and do uh, and do what you're doing. Susie, thank you for saying you're multitasking. Hopefully you're good at multitasking. You're not multitasking because you're overwhelmed because that won't do it either. Um, and Tanana's leaving us already, but I hope you leave or come back. <laughs> uh, and Susie, you're trained to be a coach. Brilliant. Well, we, we can talk again a little bit about that. Um, so <laughs> all these multitaskers, uh, we can multitask, uh, but we have to be able to do it positively and not because we are juggling too much at all. And the lovely Claire Marie has joined us now. Claire Marie is a fellow coach. Hello, Claire Marie. Nice to see you here with us. Hi, hi, hi are you everyone. okay? Yeah. What have I missed? What have I missed? I've just noticed. <laughs> oh, everything. everything. You missed that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> have you had any sessions yet, Claire Marie? No, later today. Later today. So okay. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So we were just talking about um, these these three amazing people on our panel. We've got Ben and we've got Mel and we've got Kim. And we were talking about what um, what coaching is and what it isn't, and um, and and some of the um, what, what uh, yeah some of the reasons why we do it. So what would you like to share, maybe, guys? Some um, perhaps because I'm really pra pragmatic and, and I like you know I've seen many many transformations those of you who are coaches it is it's a wonderful industry to be in because you can you see the lights go on in people's eyes and you know I'm sure many of us experience clients in tears and then they come through the other side and then they are changed people you know through this and it's happened and it's, as it's happened to me so um I'm wondering if you could perhaps share some stories guys about some um, changes and shifts you've seen with leaders that you've worked with and why it's so it can be so powerful and I'd also be interested in any um, tips but we'll come back to that after actually but perhaps let's bring this to life in a way and maybe you could share one or two stories about um, yeah how you've seen ch coaching change change people's lives um, we'll go in reverse order this time so I'm going to start with Mel <laughs> Okay, so um, one example would be somebody that I worked with on a, an operational board level and he got the opportunity to get a promotion and lost his confidence. It was like somebody pulled the plug out and he contacted me and said, look, you helped me in my previous role. Can I work with you again? Because I feel like I need to be something different and I feel like I've got imposter syndrome here that I shouldn't be in this job. 
And through a series of six sessions, we worked through just breaking some of that down. And he went on to be really successful in the new role, build his confidence back up. And I've watched him now and he's gone on to do many other things. And that was about, again, creating this safe space and allowing him to bring some of the demons in the room that were getting in the way um, about, you know, how do I present myself? What do I do? Just, you know, the whole person again. And another example would be a lady who, through the coaching with me, made the decision she didn't want to go up. She wanted to go sideways and go and do something completely different and follow a vocation but didn't have the confidence to do it. She was wrapped up in corporate reward, yeah. status, so ego, um, and made the decision that through the coaching, she was gonna be brave enough to go out on her own and do something completely different. So they're just two that come to mind, Sandra. I love that. And I think it would be really great to share perhaps some of the, the ways in which we can coach and help leaders think differently. Because, you know, what is it? So, Because there is that bit. I know last year when we did the coach film, we had a, quite a lot of people who've never had coaching before who were blown away by what it is because it, it, it's so positive and so powerful. And there's something about, oh, is it a bit of a dark art? And I think... Um, it was the guy on earlier this morning, Dennis said that um, it's, he does a lot in the Middle East and, and there's still a bit of a reputation that coaching is when you're underperforming. And it's for, as it was many years ago, I don't believe it's that anymore at all. I think it's seen as a positive thing, but, but there is this sort of sense of what is this thing, you know, because we, we, we can't believe that we can be looked after in such a positive way. So I think we need to perhaps delve into a little bit of that as well. Um, so, so over to you, Kim, what, what would you like to share about um, experiences you've had? I think one of the one of the first really good experiences I had was with somebody who was really frustrated about trying to get promoted and was focused on fitting in with everything everybody said to her about what that she was deficient in. And it was really interesting to talk to her about what was behind that drive to climb a ladder um, and how hung up she was with listening to what others said about her and not what she was feeling so we we explored over a number of sessions what really drove her where her strengths were where her values were and she really began to realize that actually she'd put a ladder against the wrong tree entirely and she was trying to trying to climb a ladder that was taking her to places she didn't actually want to go but the spirit of competition in the, the company she was working in kind of had taken over. And that was, that was really good to see that light bulb moment. It, like, it was a sudden switch went on and working with her on strengths and values. And, and again, she, she felt it's a bit like the remedial bit. She felt she had something to fix about herself. Um, but, we got we got away um, more to the sporting analogy where you're, you're just trying to get people to work to their best strengths and to collaborate with others to get a better result for everybody. And, and that was that was really revealing. Um, the ladder against the wrong tree bit was, was like a, that, yeah. a light bulb for for her and for me, actually. Yeah, it happens such a lot, doesn't it? People follow that corporate ladder and they and they just wonder why they're getting more exhausted and more worn out. And and actually, mm. as you say, they suddenly wake up, hopefully through, you know, well, either through coaching, but they wake up one day and go, oh, my God, I'm in the I'm just in the wrong place. My gifts need to go somewhere else. And I think yeah. you know, that that can happen to Mel's point earlier about how lonely it can be at the top yeah. of the tree um, and, and making that step in. So just, just through listening, you know, to what she had to say and, and picking out the bones from that and playing it back to her. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ben, your experiences. Well, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to call this person Gavin. And, I, and, and Gavin is someone, I'm sure people will recognise this. He, he's a new manager. He's, he's probably been enrolled about three months and has been promoted because he was um, technically competent and somewhat of an expert uh, in in his area of the business. So, you know, I've worked with Gavin in engineering, 
uh, environments. I've worked with Gavin in a medical environment. I've worked with Gavin in IT environments. You know, this is someone who, who's, who's really competent and has then been promoted and, and is now leading a team. And I think when I first spoke to Gavin, he was basically totally overwhelmed and, and working 15 hours a day because he was flat out busy. And so his, his essential starting point was, I'm just, I'm just too busy. I've got no time at all. And this is where I think my, I, I said earlier that coaching is about working with the individual because, you know, when we hear someone being too busy, it's really to start thinking about, you know, how do they manage their time or what might they need? But, you know, one of the things I was interested in was, was well, how come he is so busy? And, you know, one of the first things that we discovered is that, of course, having come from a very operational background, he still wants to get involved in the doing of all the tasks and doesn't really want to give his team the full opportunity to do it for themselves. And so part of it was it wasn't the, the knowing how to delegate. It was actually being able to trust his team to empower them and to some extent be OK with that himself. And I, and I think he he didn't recognize that it was his own anxieties about things being done right that were getting in the way of him being able to do that uh, there's that saying um i can't remember it, that you know as a as a bird is to the air as a fish is to water so a person is to themselves i'm so much, sure many of you heard that you know we're all sort of swimming around in our own stuff and but we're so familiar with it we don't recognize it and I think that's something in coaching that's really important is helping someone see what they're swimming around in or what, the, what they're breathing in, in terms of their own thinking. And then the other thing for Gavin was um, he, he really liked to give people time and help them. And in his, uh, in his own journey, people have been very generous with their time and had helped him and had mentored him. And he felt he really wanted to offer that back to people. And that was no longer something he could do with the, the new responsibilities that he, he had, or at least he had to learn really how to say no to people and to set some boundaries around the time that he had available. And in the past, he'd been able to give people loads of time and help out and be all around the areas of the business doing things. And, and, and one metaphor I often use is, is um, you know, we've all got computers and phones and our computers and phones regularly update themselves and they just do it in the background don't you i've just got windows 11 that's just sort of popped on my screen but um i think we're a bit like that in the sense that we often have some software and and we're running we run the software for a long time it doesn't get updated uh, and i think the metaphor for gavin was that he had some outdated software you know he was running he was running windows xp in an environment that required the latest model so we sort of had to update his software around uh how he needed to approach working with people and giving time to people and help him, you know, find a new way to do that. So part of that was around, you know, knowing to set boundaries and say no more often. And so, you know, it, after about six months of working, he, he reported having way more time, having a team that were much more empowered, having um, the ability to, to uh, set boundaries, boundaries with other people in the business so that he could give them time but also he would give them ownership over things rather than taking it all on himself. And so he was, he was feeling really different. Love that. I love the software upgrade. What a great metaphor, Ben. I think we can all, we'll all have that one if that's okay. <laughs> Help that's yourself. Exactly what it is. And that's personal growth, isn't it? And development. It's uh, that's brilliant. And um, yeah, yeah. I actually did coach a Gavin once and I was, I was kind of thinking, you know, you'd work with him too. <laughs> 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 I'll say no more. Um, so I had a little quick story. You reminded me actually about um, looking at it from the other point of view, from the client's point of view and what they need to do to show up in the right way. So I had a, I was invited into a corporate to help somebody get onto the board and um, they didn't think they actually didn't think she could. She had it in her because there was only a six months window. They thought though they were actually looking externally. So um, and, and, you know, I said, look, I can't make miracles happen. <laughs> but I have to say this woman was awesome because she really wanted to get to the next level and she was holding herself back. And you know what? Um, what was brilliant about her? And I think this is where coaching works really well. And as coaches, we have to set that space in the right way, don't we? But um, we did a really good contracting piece up front around what she wanted, what was realistic, what could she commit to her own development? Because we all know how busy we are and these leaders we work with are so stretched. How do they find the time? 
time to do their own thing. But she made it a priority. She let go of some stuff and she would prep for the sessions. She'd take the learning. She was like the biggest sponge I've ever known. And she'd be doing it. She'd, uh, she'd be texting me, oh my God, out of my comfort zone. I've tried doing this, this and this. And the, the woman did it in four and a half months. They were blown away by her. Now, yeah, I created the space. Yes, I gave her some tips and tools as we do. But she was kind of, because she was had somebody who was there with her, she went for it. And I had to, have, you know, have, give her a big round of applause and all of that because she really showed up in the right way. And again, we, I think that's an important part of this. Sometimes as coaches, we take it on ourselves too much, don't we? That it's kind of, have we, have we done a good enough job? And actually it's about creating the space to trust yourself, trust them and enable them to shine. But you've really got to get that get that bit right. You know, that, that there's that side of the, of the coaching, I think that, that has to happen, especially I'm still coaching leaders who've never had coaching before. It blows my mind, you know, and, and um, trying to help them to see what they need to do as part of the party as well. So um, anybody on the call want to share any of their experiences of coaching with us? Because I know some people have got coaches and some haven't and some are coaches and some aren't. Um, anybody want to, to share theirs? Always lovely to hear from people. Um, Petra, would you like to say it? Yeah, hi, I, welcome. I can, I can share from, uh, from one client. He was a uh, 35 or something, financial manager for a private equity firm. And he was doing a great job, but he was so insecure. So the the um, so he worked his way up. He wasn't from, you know, preppy universities and stuff. So he really started bottom at the bottom and worked himself up. And he worked for Pricewaterhouse. And now he was working for this private equity small firm with the owners, you know, the ultimate private equity guys, you know, ultra confident, ultra rich, ultra intelligent and ultra relaxed. And he was like, oh, so unrelaxed. So his boss said, you know, we really love what you do, but you have to change in your behavior because, you know, you don't fit in the team and the team that you're, um, that is with you is, is not feeling comfortable. And it was really great to see because there was so much saboteurs in his head holding him back and, and bringing him down and, and being able to work with that and um, let him gain confidence and give him the confidence to relax and open up to his the people from his team and also to the owners. And it really worked miracles. And it really took a short time because he was really eager. And I have to say, he was really, he really recognized the problem and he was eager to work with it. And, and you know, you know, when you, you sometimes you see the switch when, when it, it, I was moved to tears and I was in my early stages as a coach. I, of course, I didn't feel like crying in front of him because he would be, we would have been, what's happening? But, but I saw it happen. And from there on, it was it was easy peasy and i'm still in touch with him after a couple of years and it's just it's, it's great so it makes you really humble and very grateful yeah. to be able to do that work yeah and also there's always these business benefits you know we kind of talk about the impact on the individual and the emotional and all of that stuff which is where we love to be but actually you know for an organization that, that either helps somebody become <laughs> or somebody who they don't have to go out and recruit you know the the investment is massive Definitely. yeah because the boss paid it because he saw what the guy had in him and he was a very valuable worker yeah yeah no brilliant fantastic i love that um Claire marie were you going to add anything uh yes thanks yeah so i i'm working with a client at the moment and it's it's blowing me away the impact of coaching so it's a women's leadership program and it just launched a few months ago and they've picked 12 really technically competent women that are across the organization and that the again I'm impressed with the organization they want these women to go on and hire and in in the leadership and but these women have not been putting themselves forward for jobs and for roles and um, so they just wanted to do something different so I've designed like a 12-month program for them and we kicked it off and I, you know, I had a one-to-one -one call with all of them, understand where they are, you know, build a bit of rapport. And I remember the first session, 
we got them all in a room together and even I thought oh my god we've so bloody far to go we're not gonna make it 12 months isn't enough and we ran that session and it were we were all in tears by the end of the day and the trust that was in the room and then I've been doing one-to-one coaching calls with them all because we're trying to balance a group cohort experience with individual focused you know support so what and and again they're all they're all at different levels of experience different backgrounds um and the coaching calls are so varied I mean I've really had to pull on so much stuff and be completely different nearly for each person but we had the second session when we had the whole cohort together only about a week ago and the HR director who commissioned it all, she said she can already feel the ripples in the organization. Um, and we don't have far to go at all, it, but I can remember, you know, you, there's always a dip at the beginning. I was like, oh my God, we're just not, it's not possible. And, and so I suppose I'm learning and I learn it every single time. <laughs> You've just got to trust the process and trust the people and just do you, the thing that you can do and then, the magic happens, you know. Uh, I love that. Yeah, the magic absolutely happens. Uh, and I, you know, I think Sandra that some of the magic is being listened to, and I think sometimes we mustn't <laughs> underestimate how valuable holding the space for somebody else is when they come in, and allowing them to do a bit of a download. Because in your active listening stance as a coach, you can pick so much up that you can bring back in the room when they tell you their story. And it's not that you're confrontational in an aggressive way, but noticing things and bringing it to their attention can really change the focus because people get very good at telling the same story and they believe the story they tell because that's how our brains work, how we record information and how it comes back to us. I've been here before, I did this, I'll do this again. And so going back and doing any sort of behavioral change <laughs> takes time and repetition. And it's the safety of somebody saying, it's really funny you're telling me this story about that, you know, it's your boss's problem, but you told me this about the past three organizations and it's always been the boss's problem. What's your role in this? And they go, well, what's it got to do with me? And I'm like, well, you're the common factor here that always leaves because of the boss. So what goes on with that hierarchical relationship? And it's, it's when you call some of those things in the moment and you get that silence of the thinking and making the connections that we have to remember as coaches that that makes a huge difference because we're making the observations that they can't make themselves because they're too close to it love that now and the, the the trust that you set up through those conversations is is really valuable too because if if people don't trust you to help them um, in a safe environment um, then you're not going to get very far we still have coaching slots available today those of you who are coaches on the call have any of you got any slots left i know loads have sold out actually but anybody uh, give us a wave or a hand if you have any slots. i've got one all oh, kim's got a slot available 25 quid that's it to be coached <laughs> by kim come on that's nothing is it it is it's in, extraordinary so please um book on because we i think hayden can put the link in can't you hayden to the, to find a coach um that you want to do um uh, i've we'll got some supervision slots available too um and that that's the space where coaches can come and talk about their practice so for most of you in professional bodies you'll know the value of supervision but if you've never had it it's a really safe space for you to work with somebody on your coaching practice and again it's confidential but it, it will give you a taster of what that would look like so I've sold and my coaching my hand, coach supervisor, my... and she is phenomenal and she <laughs> is yeah she's dead challenging and dead inspiring so um I would highly recommend if you haven't got a coach supervisor if you are a coach get a session with Mel um, um, make sure you're prepped 
<laughs> Good. Well, I can't believe the time. Where are we at? Well, 25 to 11 already. So maybe I can come back to the well, two things. Questions, please. Anybody got any questions at all about how to be coached, um, value coaching, etc. Please um, pop it in the chat box and we will happily answer them. I thought we might have time to do a live coaching session, but I don't know if that's going to happen now. So maybe if I can come back to the three panellists here and um, would you like to share any final thoughts about um, either any top tips that you would recommend or anything else you want to say by, um, by the value of, of what we're doing and why we really need to get coaching out there in a big way because so many people still don't know about coaching um, and it's, uh, it's an awesome thing to have um, and I'll leave that as a who wants to go first oh, Andrew, I'll, I'll say something <laughs> I, I just wanted to pick up actually some, on something that Claire Marie said um, and, and Claire Marie was talking about the, the women that she's coaching and you said something like you know every single session has been different Claire Marie and and one of the things that I'm often struck by is how as a coach you know we have to be really versatile and and work with with different people on different topics and also work the way that we work with them has to be very different because people respond to things so differently and and you know flipping that around i think that's part of the power of coaching is that you know, a really good coach is able to tap into whatever helps uh, an individual you know access the right motivation and insights and understanding that they just might not be able to find out for themselves in any other way. And, you know, you can read books and you can gain knowledge, but, but relating it to yourself is really hard sometimes. And, and a good coach will help you access that. So I think as coaches, what we're, what we're often doing is really just trying to flex ourselves to find the right way to, to work with that individual on whatever they need and, and to help them get the insights in, in the right way for them. Yeah, great point. Thank you. Um, love that. Kim. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think the important thing for me is to help your clients to to get to the facts of the situation, to to get pierce the narrative that people build around themselves and to make sure that they are dealing with evidence based information really about facts about what actually is happening and and like Mel was saying about that you know and what's your part in this relationship or whatever um, it's really important to put aside the assumptions and the narratives and to make the subconscious conscious absolutely right yeah completely and I I think to add to that, I think the thing that we have to do as coaches and, and part of it we learn as part of our coach training is we join somebody in the middle of their journey. We're never at the beginning and we're never at the end. We come in when the story and the tapestry has started and we help sort the colours out, sort some of the shapes out and off they go on their journey again. And so we become dab hands at working with ambiguity. How often do I find a coachee shows up in the room who has no clue what they want to talk about? And yet we can talk for 90 minutes quite easily. And sometimes that's just about what shows up in the room and the space that you have created and how rich that is. The other thing to remember that as a coach, we never stop learning. Part of our training is the more you know, the more there is to know. And so... On the learning journey that we go as coaches, we bring you with us and hopefully we inspire that insatiable need to keep learning about yourself. Because I don't think anybody ever gets to know themselves 100%. I think the more we dig in, the more we notice patterns, the more we can work with those, the more things that we didn't particularly like about ourselves or we didn't think were strengths, we change our perspective about them because they're things we remembered from when we were six and seven that are no use to us anymore as grown adults and we can have some fun with them. So, you know, we're not here just because we're good people. We've all gone through thorough training as many of you have and being able to deal with that ambiguity and join in the middle of somebody's journey is, is a very inspiring place to be. And, and I certainly feel very privileged when I work with clients to, to, to be invited on that journey with them. 
I don't know what to say now. <laughs> that was so that's, that's unusual. <laughs> that's feedback for me. <laughs> no, in a good that's way. <laughs> but you did remind, make me think about that constant learning. I think it's that those in the coach profession, we do have this constant desire to continually evolve as people, don't we? I think I don't know many coaches that aren't signing up for stuff all the time. And um, as Mel knows I've just signed up to become a, a certified team coach, and that's just blown my mind already with the sheer and stuff I'm now learning that I've like that. Oh my God, I hadn't even looked at it through all these different lenses, and. Um, I, and, and it's brilliant because then it, I hope it enables me to show up in an even better way and to be an even better coach to help the people I'm helping be better themselves. Because, you know, that's what I love about working with leaders is that the more we can help them show up in their best way, the, the impact on their organisations is massive. And then we start to affect communities and we start to have this really amazing shift in, um, in, in behaviour because at the end of the day, we all want to be, you know, very positive and upbeat and to, to focus on what's great and there's too many bloody problems in the world we've got to sort them out so get yourself a bloody coach and get yourself trained as a coach if you've not already <laughs> there endeth the word oh, any final comments from anybody before we wrap our um our fabulous panel um with with the with amazing ben and malika i mean goodness wouldn't want coaching from all three of these people they're brilliant aren't they um so thank you very much for for being here um, I want to hear for, oh, Petra's just registered for a session with, dun, 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 Mel. Hey, look <laughs> at that. I Thank love you, it. Petra. It's all just happening here live. As I've said, those of you who are coaches, please keep telling us through the day about your experiences. And if, if you're a client who's had a session today, please tell us, because we'd love to really spread the word about the power of this. And um, honestly, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've sold so many sessions. We're raising loads of money. And if you haven't given us any money, why not? Put some money in the pot. Hayden, put the link into Microloan. Put your tenor here, there and everywhere. Forget your lattes this week. Give the money to Microloan Foundation or get yourself another coaching session with one of these brilliant people. Um, Claire Marie, have you got a, an announcement to make? Claire Marie's always up to something. There we go, look. She's always up to something, always spreading the word. Queen Bee Coaching, take a look at that as well. Um, and that would be fantastic. Is there, are there any other questions from anybody um, on today's call that you would like us to answer? Otherwise, it's time for a break before at 11 o'clock, we're going to find out all about Microloan, what they get up to and where all the money we're raising today is going to go. How cool is that going to be? Did I get a woohoo from everyone then? Oh. <laughs> awesome. No, that's been brilliant. Thank you. Thanks again, everyone, for your participation. Hopefully keep seeing me throughout the day. So uh, go get yourselves a cuppa. Get, get coached and head back here later. See you soon. Great to meet you all. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. And thanks. Uh, thanks again. <laughs>